This instructional video will demonstrate how to write a proper Lewis structure and use Vesper theory to extract information from that structure. The Lewis structure procedure is written over here uh, in a shortened form and the information that we can extract directly from the Lewis structure is written over here. In the case of the dipole moment and the final check step where we find formal charges, uh, we'll actually have to draw much of that information on the structure itself. So we begin with the first step which is counting up our valence electrons and for this we use a periodic chart and what we know about where things lie in it to determine that SO2 is going to pick up six valence electrons from the sulfur and two times six from the oxygens, giving me a total of 18 electrons. The basic structure requires that we have the sulfur atom in the middle and our oxygens attached to it. This will use up four electrons and in our housekeeping that leaves us with 14. At this point we want to assign octets to both the inside and outside. And we can do so by adding 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12 to our oxygens. And those 12 electrons leave us with two to work with. If I place these two electrons on the sulfur, it's quick to confirm that while the oxygens have eight, sulfur only has six. So in order to fix this, I'll have to use a double bond on one of the oxygens. And so I'll erase a pair there and replace it with this line here. Now we can see that the oxygen has eight, this oxygen has eight, and the sulfur also has eight. And so we're done with the basic structure. The only thing left is to check for resonance. Now, there's no good reason that this oxygen has to have a double bond and this one has to have a single. Because it's possible to write two structures that are correct with just a flip or a rotation, then we want to acknowledge that by saying times two for resonance. And so this completes the Lewis structure portion. For the Vesper theory, we have to actually look at what we have here and apply that to the list of things that we want to calculate, uh, that we want to determine. So we have one group, two groups, three groups. So we have three groups of electrons around that central atom, one of which is a non-bonding pair. And so uh, what we have then with the count being three groups is sp2 hybridization that immediately implies an electronic shape of a trigonal planar and a molecular shape because we have one non-bonding group of bent. So because this molecule is bent, when we look to the electronegativity difference to determine polarity, we recognize that sulfur is going to be the positive end of the bond and oxygen, the negative end. And so we draw our dipoles on the individual bonds. And because these do not cancel each other out, we can say that yes, we do have a dipole. And so now that we've determined that there's a dipole, the only thing left to do is assign a formal charge. We have three atoms with unique arrangements of electrons around them. And so we can draw representatives of these three and determine a formal charge for each. So the formal charge is the difference between an atom sitting by itself and its arrangement of electrons once it's in the molecule. So we want to account for the six valence that it came into it with. And we have to get the difference between that and what's going on with its electrons once it's bonded. And so in this case, we have two that are being unshared. We have a total of six that are being shared. And if we assume a 50-50 split, then that's three. Here we have six that are not being shared, and we get one from splitting uh, that bond. We have four that are not being shared, and we can expect to pick up two here. And so, uh, for the sulfur, we expect a charge of plus one. For the singly bonded oxygen, we expect a charge of negative one. And for the doubly bonded oxygen, we expect a formal charge of zero. 
Now, the reason this step is important in verifying whether or not we did this part right is that by assigning these formal charges, we can then observe that the total of the formal charges on everything in the molecule equals the overall charge, both of which are zero. So this is a very good indication that we have a valid and reasonable Lewis structure.